Hey guys, DC here, and this is my review of Oceanhorn Chronos Dungeon. So the game is loading up here. And uh, the Oceanhorn series has been pretty prevalent within the Apple Arcade and the App Store here for Apple TV. Um, we're going to go to a new game here. And I'm going to put it on easy uh, just because, you know, I don't know how difficult this game really is. So let's see here as it gives us some backstory. A long time has passed since the White City was washed from the face of Gaia and the once magnificent kingdom of Arcadia was shattered into hundreds of islands. Yes, yeah, I like how Legends games really Arcadians build up the story for you here. One so powerful it can makes it that much more interesting, something you want to get into. Be used to rewrite this and history. Ocean Horn, you know, there's been, I think, two single-player games that have came out uh, before this one. So I know there's Ocean Horn 1 and 2, and now this. And this is the first sort of co-op game, multiplayer, uh, in the series. Uh, this game is four players, and it gives you that um, sort of gauntlet type feel. I remember as early as Nintendo when Gauntlet came out, and I remember that being you know one of my favorite games uh, on the original Nintendo, and then just kind of seeing it grow from there. And now it looks like we're getting some uh, heroes introduced here, and we have the Huntress, which is like kind of like the Archer in Gauntlet, uh, the Grand Master, and then we have the Mage, which is you know a magician, same as the magician in Gauntlet. So this game really gives me those Gauntlet vibes. Uh, again, I played the original one on Nintendo, and then. I went on to continue playing up until uh, Gauntlet Legends and, and then I think beyond. So Gauntlet Legends was a popular game in the arcade uh, that I used to go to in New Jersey. Uh, the, the Bridgewater Sports Arena had arcades there and I remember playing Gauntlet Legends and then eventually that came on N64 and kind of really just ran that game, uh, you know, ran that game all the way through with a group of my friends. So a lot of fun times. Uh, I'm just getting a controller set up here. Trying to get the, my other uh, player uh, kind of logged in here. I'm, I'm playing with my significant other here, so trying to get her uh, all set up. So, show you guys a little bit of a co op action here. And, yeah, the Oceanhorn series, the, at least the first two games, really give me that Legend of Zelda vibe. So, on this channel before, I've mentioned Ocarina of Time a few times, and you know, that, that's what I kind of see when I play that game. I actually have not played the, the first two Ocean Horns that I've seen. And that's something I mean to get to. And, you know, I may potentially, potentially do reviews for uh, those first two Ocean Horns. But, um, I don't know, this game just kind of uh, seems a little more interesting uh, as of now. And then, you know, I may work my way back. But this is a fairly new game with me, Apple Arcade. So, uh, right now, we're just kind of uh, getting our getting our bearings here with, with the game. So again, we're using the uh, Steel Series Nimbus, I have two of them. And I'm um, just kind of trying to figure out what we're supposed to do and um, getting control of the, uh, getting control of kind of like the handling, the buttons, the, the mechanics of the game here. And um, as we kind of progress here through the first, through the first few stages, the, um, the guy will give us prompts and everything like that. Many useful items are hidden inside crates and jars. So the, the game is kind of giving us prompts, almost like a tutorial here. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, it has the directional pad uh, set up as to move, but you can also move with a joystick with this game. Um, attack is A, X would be our, our items, special items, B is dash. And then we have the menu, and then, you know, the trigger buttons uh, to switch our characters. So. You can see there at the top of the screen there is four different characters that we can kind of switch um, in and out from, and then uh, you know, uh, but you can see which character you're on uh, by where it says player one, player two. You can see there that the first two players is the ones we're controlling right now. So we're just trying to kind of get our bearings here, and. Uh, I'm the, I guess the main sort of the knight with a sword, and she's the uh, huntress right now. So, 
I'm trying, I'm trying to get her uh, kind of used to the game, get her caught up here a little bit. So yeah, the, the first two Ocean Horns give me that Zelda type feel, and you can see me kind of switching through characters right now, seeing how the different attacks are. You know, the, the knight has kind of that melee attack with his sword. Uh, you can see, um, was I think the Grand Master also has like a staff that he uses. And then the other two, you see the Huntress has the bow, bow and arrow there, like the Archer and Gauntlet. So yeah, this is kind of like that classic dun dungeon crawler, but a little bit more involved, right? So kind of a blend of a dungeon crawler as well as a um, kind of like an RPG sort of blend here. Does it, it, does it, the game does a pretty good uh, job at blending. Uh, you don't really see the, um, I guess, the hit points and things like that, like like your RPGs, but um, this, this is a good blend. Uh, probably the best blend would be like a Secret of Mana. I'm not sure any, how many of you guys are familiar with that game, but Secret of Mana uh, is also probably an influence on this game as well. Secret of Mana, I think I remember first playing on the Super Nintendo, and uh, I think that was a three-player game at the time, and uh, you can just see me kind of going through some of the menu here. Just pause the game here to kind of take a look at some of the menu and what it shows us. It shows us here that the knight is being foolish. The character becomes immune to all traps. Omicron character receives damage boost under the star sign. So choose character level up and select new skills to unlock. I'm just kind of going through what, what we have here in the menu. But as I was saying before, um, you know, I, I get the the combination of different sort of games I feel like is what uh, is influencing uh, this game here, uh, Ocean Horn, Chronos Dungeon. You know, a little bit of Zelda, obviously from the, the Ocean Horn sort of influence on this game, the first two in, in the series, and then it gives, it gives us a little bit of that gauntlet vibe. And then I'll throw in a little bit of Secret of Mana as well. And then, you know, you have this here. Collecting gold may prove Collecting gold may improve may prove useful in the long run. So yeah, this this game um the mechanics are pretty are pretty cool. And you can see in front of our characters there, there's like the little dot that just kind of shows what, what direction we're pointing in. We have sort of that 360 sort of um, attack radius. So you know the game is, is pretty it can be pretty exact. So wherever your your circle is or your dot is, that's where you're gonna attack or shoot your arrow or whatever it may be. So um, the game kind of has that that sort of tight control. Uh, that you need when you're kind of aiming and directing your character. So I think it gives us that nice control and it kind of gives us a, a target to aim at. But again, the controls are super tight in this game. And, you know, I, I just like the design of it. Again, it, it really takes me back to a lot of those, you know, older dungeon crawlers. And again, uh, I brought it, I brought it, I keep bringing up Gauntlet and I think you know, but that's probably the most classic one that I can remember that I, you know I fell in love with when I first started playing sort of you know dungeon crawlers. So we're just hanging out here for a little bit. Uh, I think I, t I may have took a quick little break there uh, just to kind of run and check something out, but I think we're uh, kind of ready to go here. Just kind of uh, interacting with the environment, collecting some money. Yeah, and our game, you can see our health is full, so when our health is full, you know, you can't pick up any more food. So the game kind of tells us that. Just exploring our environment. They got T-bone steaks, chicken legs, all those things. So, I think we are ready to move forward here. 
Each member of your party has unique powers. Use a character with long range attacks to turn those levers. So you can see levers here on either side of us. And I think what I end up doing is I end up changing my character or I have my uh, significant other uh, I think shoot the uh, shoot the levers there. I think I'm trying to I'm, try, I'm trying to tell her to, you know, use her character to hit the, to hit the lever to get her engaged. So let's see if I can get her to do it. Then I, I think I may end up just switching my character to do it. See up there up, up top we have the spikes, so we can't run past those spikes there. So we're gonna have to hit those levers, and I'm trying to tell her to. To aim her character to hit the levers there. Okay, there we go. So there's at least I'm doing it. And I switch to the archer here. And we get the spikes down, so we're ready to go here. Locked gate. Look for a key. So we need the key to unlock the gate. So you can see there the gate is locked. And the camera will, will pull out here. As you know, obviously with multiplayer games, the camera will pull out once the characters kind of um, get a little separated. And then it'll, it'll pull in a little bit here uh, when when the characters are closer. So I, I was able to get past the spikes here and pick up the key. And so we're, we're ready to go now. All right, so we got some bad guys here. There is a chest with a special item inside. Try some sort of turtle crab character that's been around. Dropped us some money there. Gonna see what's in this chest. And again, this this game is is, is running really smooth right now. I mean, I, I definitely this is this is. Um, Again, my first time playing this game, and uh, I definitely recommend it. It runs smooth, it looks good. So if you if you have a, a group of your friends, you and three other friends, this, this looks like it can keep you entertained here for quite a while. So... This is one of the games I definitely recommend for the for the Apple for the Apple Arcade. A good selling point for the Apple Arcade. Again, I think I think you know gamers of all ages can probably enjoy this. Good family game. Defeating enemies award you with the XP that has experience points. So yeah, you can see your your party, depending on who you're using, you know, the, the, the experience points um, will either continue to rise or they'll drop. So I, I've you know you can see me I kind of switch a little bit here and there. You know, I, I've switched now to the archer. Um, and then my my, my girlfriend has switched over to, uh, I want to say, the mage. Good. Now there is enough XP for a so, and I'm, I'm, I've just been switching back and forth so that your party levels up evenly, right? So that's one thing in these games. You want to make sure your party is leveling up evenly. Uh, you don't want members of your party being significantly stronger or weaker than the others. Ideally you want them to level up as, as even as possible. And you can see here, um, see my, my girlfriend's character, he's, 
she's ready to, to level up here any moment, looks like. You know, we have, there's something over her head now. So, that character is ready to level up here any moment. And some of these cutscenes, we can see all four members of the party here, which is cool. Congratulations, champions of Arcadia. Against all odds, you have found your way into the realm of Kronos, the master of time. You came here for the paradigm hourglass to turn back time and restore. And what's cool about this game, it deals with time travel to a certain extent. Well, I'm not Our heroes are trying to turn back time. So I think we're looking for an hourglass, and anything with time travel is, you know, is kind of really my, my interest. I love everything with time travel, whether it be movies or video games. Uh, I love the concept of time and reversing it, time travel, time dilation, with an in interstellar. Relativity, you know, of all those things. So this game is right up my alley. See, the paradigm hourglass can be used all over the course of history. So it just saves us, saved our progress there. Then we're good to go. Well. uh that's pretty much it for my review. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, I recommend this game highly. Uh, again, based on it being a, a fun little co-op dungeon crawler. Uh, you know, you, you, I, I think that the possibilities for this game are endless. Um, and again, I'm sure it's going to be receiving constant updates. I think that uh, this is a, a no-brainer here with a game like this. This is definitely a lot of fun. Tight controls, cool little characters, um, a lot of kind of uh, character development you can build within this game, and you know I think you'll you'll have a good time. So, with that being said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, you can't win if you don't play.